Oh, stay down. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Don't risk your life. Heat, the ultimate crime thriller masterpiece that redefined the genre and forever changed how we view the cat and mouse dynamic between cops and robbers. But beyond those iconic shootouts and that legendary diner scene, lies some mind-blowing secrets that'll have you questioning everything you thought you knew about this cinematic landmark. Stick around because today we're diving into 10 weird and wild heat facts that sound completely made up but aren't. And trust us, you don't want to miss the bonus fact at the end. It's explosive. Number 1. The Legendary First Meeting The iconic coffee shop scene where criminal mastermind Neil McCauley sits face to face with Detective Vincent Hanna wasn't just any movie moment. It was the first time Al Pacino and Robert De Niro ever shared the screen together. Despite both starring in The Godfather Part II almost two decades earlier, they never appeared in a single scene together. Director Michael Mann knew the weight of this Hollywood collision and filmed their conversation with two cameras simultaneously to capture authentic reactions. The tension you feel watching isn't just acting, it's cinema history unfolding before your eyes. That six minute exchange didn't just define a movie, it created a benchmark for every cat and mouse thriller that followed. When legends finally collide, even silence becomes deafening. Number two, military grade gunfights. The heart-stopping downtown shootout wasn't just movie magic. It was military precision in action. Val Kilmer's reload technique during the bank heist became legendary among firearms experts and actual military personnel. Mann hired former SAS operative Andy McNabb to train the actors, transforming them into believable professional criminals through rigorous weapons handling courses. The cast fired thousands of live rounds at shooting ranges to develop muscle memory that looked natural on camera. Sound engineers recorded each weapon's actual blast without artificial enhancements, creating the raw, echoing urban battlefield that makes viewers flinch in their seats. That ear-splitting authenticity wasn't a sound effect. It was revolutionary sound design that forever changed how Hollywood portrays gunfire. Sometimes reality hits harder than fiction. Number three real-life criminal inspiration. He wasn't born from pure imagination. It was ripped straight from reality. The intense rivalry between Neil McCauley and Vincent Hanna mirrors the real-life cat-and-mouse game between career criminal Neil McCauley and Chicago detective Chuck Adamson in the 1960s. They actually did meet for coffee just like in the film, sharing a strange mutual respect before McCauley was ultimately killed in a shootout. Mann interviewed Adamson extensively, incorporating authentic criminal methodologies and detective work into the script. The infamous armored car robbery, the crew dynamics, even Macaulay's personal philosophy, all based on truth. That electric authenticity you feel throughout the film, it's not just masterful filmmaking. It's history photographed through a cinematic lens. Number four, obsessive detail. Michael Mann's legendary obsession with authenticity transformed Heat from a movie into a documentary-like experience. Mann made De Niro wear the exact same brand of underwear that the real Macaulay preferred, despite this detail never appearing on screen. Every actor received a detailed character bible with psychological profiles, background stories, and even dental records. Mann insisted on filming exclusively in Los Angeles locations where similar crimes had actually occurred. The production team consulted with professional thieves to ensure every safe-cracking technique and escape route was tactically sound. That unshakable realism permeating every frame? It's the result of a director who refuses to fake even the smallest detail when reality can build something greater. Number 5. Criminal Copycats The brutal realism of Heat didn't just influence cinema, it inspired actual criminals. In 1997, just two years after the film's release, the notorious North Hollywood shootout erupted when heavily armed bank robbers engaged in a firefight with police that eerily mirrored the film's downtown gunfight. The criminals wore body armor, carried modified automatic weapons, and used military-style tactics directly inspired by the movie. 
Investigators later found Heat playing in the suspect's VCR and tactical notes referencing specific scenes. Law enforcement agencies subsequently changed their training protocols and upgraded their weapons to match potential threats. Wayne Grow, where is he? Where is he? How the hell would I know? Mann himself was deeply troubled by this dark legacy. One detective told Mann, your film became a training video for every aspiring heist crew in America. That line between art and influence? Sometimes it's thinner and darker than anyone could imagine. Number six, from failed TV pilot to cinematic masterpiece. What became one of the greatest crime films ever made started as a rejected uh, television pilot. In 1989, Michael Mann created LA Takedown, a 97 minute TV movie meant to launch a series that networks ultimately passed on. Six years later, Mann resurrected and expanded his concept into a three hour theatrical epic. He transformed wooden TV dialogue into philosophical exchanges, upgraded the cast from unknown actors to Hollywood legends, and elevated every technical aspect from cinematography to sound design. The coffee shop scene, the beach house ending, even the famous quote about not getting attached, all existed in the original version, just waiting for proper execution. That artistic persistence in the face of rejection? It's the rarely told origin story behind what many critics now consider the greatest crime film ever made. Number seven, method acting, taken to extremes. De Niro and Pacino didn't just play criminals and cops, they lived as them. De Niro arranged meetings with real life professional thieves, convincing one to take him on actual reconnaissance missions, casing potential targets. The criminal later remarked he would have hired De Niro in a heartbeat based on his natural instincts. Meanwhile, Pacino embedded with LAPD detective units, witnessing homicide scenes and interrogations firsthand. He based Hannah's explosive personality on a specific detective known for unpredictable bursts of intensity. The entire ensemble cast shadowed their real-world counterparts for months. Val Kilmer practiced weapon drills until he could execute tactical reloads faster than many professional operators. That documentary-like authenticity permeating every performance, it wasn't just preparation. It was total immersion in dangerous worlds. Number eight, improvised movie magic. The film's most quotable moments weren't written in man's meticulous script. They emerged spontaneously from actors fully inhabiting their characters. Pacino's explosive because she's got a great ass. Outburst shocked everyone on set including actor Hank Azaria, whose genuine stunned reaction made the final cut. Mann encouraged these moments, creating an environment where seasoned performers could build on his foundation. De Niro's decision to suddenly invite Pacino to coffee was an unplanned character choice that Mann immediately recognized as perfect. The iconic don't waste my motherfucking timeline was Pacino's invention, delivered differently in each take until Mann found the perfect intensity. You're wasting my motherfucking time. Even small moments, like Tom Sizemore nervously clicking his teeth during the crew's final meeting, came from actors finding behavioral details man hadn't specified. These spontaneous contributions added unpredictable human texture to a film otherwise defined by its precision. While man mapped the architecture of each scene with surgical exactness, he recognized that true authenticity requires space for human unpredictability. This delicate balance between control and creative freedom created a film that feels simultaneously orchestrated and alive, like watching real people making high stakes decisions in real time. Those goosebump moments that feel almost documentary-like, they're what happens when preparation meets inspiration in the hands of masters. Number nine, revolutionary sound design. Heat's groundbreaking sound design didn't just complement the visuals, it fundamentally changed how audiences experience action cinema. Sound designer Dante Spinotti refused to use standard Hollywood gun effects, opting instead to record actual firearms discharging in Los Angeles streets to capture the authentic urban echo effect. This revolutionary approach meant each gunshot reverberates between skyscrapers exactly as it would in reality, creating the most accurate representation of urban combat ever committed to film. Mann insisted on recording all dialogue on location rather than in post-production. 
capturing the natural acoustic properties of each environment, from the roar of aircraft at LAX to the intimate whispers in Pacino's beach house. Every car engine sound came from the actual vehicles used on screen, recorded at various RPMs to match the specific driving intensity of each scene. The mixing team pioneered new techniques for layering ambient sound, creating a three-dimensional audio experience that placed viewers inside the action decades before surround sound became standard. Mann's controversial decision to occasionally prioritize environmental sounds over dialogue forces viewers to experience scenes as participants rather than observers. Film schools now use the bank heist sequence as the definitive example of action sound design, with professors highlighting how the absence of music creates unbearable tension through pure environmental audio. Sound engineers still refer to achieving the heat effect when discussing perfectly captured gunfire acoustics. That visceral, immersive quality that makes your heart race during the shootout? It's not just what you're seeing, it's a revolution in what you're hearing. Number 10. From critical disappointment to cinematic touchstone, he initially received a lukewarm reception that would shock today's film buffs. Critics praised the performances but called it overlong and self-indulgent. The film underperformed at the box office, overshadowed by family-friendly holiday releases. But something remarkable happened in the decades that followed. Heat's reputation grew through word of mouth, DVD sales, and cable television screenings. Filmmakers like Christopher Nolan, Denis Villeneuve, and David Fincher began citing it as a primary influence. Film scholars re-examined its revolutionary techniques. Police academies and military units began screening the shootout for tactical training. By the 2000s, Heat had secured its place in the pantheon of perfect films, regularly appearing on greatest of all time lists. That slow burn journey from overlooked to legendary, it's the ultimate proof that true masterpieces aren't always recognized immediately. Sometimes greatness requires time to be fully appreciated. Bonus fact, The Dark Knight's criminal DNA. Christopher Nolan's revolutionary Batman film, The Dark Knight carries Heat's cinematic DNA in nearly every frame. Nolan screened Heat for his entire cast and crew before filming, explicitly instructing them to study its techniques. The Dark Knight's opening bank heist directly mirrors Heat's precision robbery sequences, down to the criminals eliminating each other after completing their roles. Heath Ledger's Joker was partially inspired by De Niro's calculated philosophical criminal mastermind. The iconic interrogation scene between Batman and Joker deliberately echoes the coffee shop confrontation, two formidable opponents verbally circling each other across a table. Even the IMAX cinematography of Gotham's architectural landscape pays homage to man's sweeping Los Angeles vistas. Nolan himself has confirmed, Heat is a touchstone for me, a film that sharpened my understanding of how action and character can intertwine perfectly. That revolutionary influence, it's how cinematic excellence perpetuates itself across generations, with one masterpiece directly shaping another, the highest form of artistic tribute. And there you have it, bizarre, real, and totally fascinating facts about the world of heat. If you enjoyed this deep dive, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and remember, in the words of Neil McCauley, don't waste my motherfucking time. It's about precision, preparation, and knowing when to walk away. See you next time.